Hi everyone! Today I wanted to talk about three short story collections that I read recently. I mostly wanted to talk about them in the same video because they are all short story collections written by women, and they're also three collections that I really enjoyed. That's pretty much where the similarities end, but I didn't know if I wanted to make three separate videos for each of these collections. I didn't know if I had enough to say about them to make three separate videos for each of them. So I decided to just talk about them all here, right now. I am someone who is relatively new and inexperienced with short story collections. I have read very few, and I have enjoyed even fewer. I, I think that it is a matter of finding short stories that work for me, defining for myself what that means, and then looking for things that I know fulfill that. I have learned that I like fabulous short stories, but they don't necessarily have to be fabulous fiction or magical realism. Two of these collections here are actually realism and have no magical realism in them, but one does. I think that I think that magical realism works really well in short stories. I tend to really enjoy that. Still definitely trying to find my footing in terms of what I like and don't like in short story collections. It's definitely still a learning experience, but these are three that I think would be really accessible and good places to start for people that are also relatively unfamiliar with short story collections. Like I am. The first one that I wanted to talk about is Revenge by Yoko Ogawa, translated by Steven Snyder. This is a collection that I read for Japanese June. It was not in my original TBR, but I, but I just felt in the mood for it, so I decided to pick it up, and I'm really glad that I did. I originally tried to read this in winter of last year, and it was a time in my life where I wasn't really reading much of anything, and I found it really hard to focus on much, but this is actually a really readable and quite short short story collection. It's only 161 pages, and all the short stories are connected, so it's very compelling to, to keep reading and to find out how and why they're connected. Yoko Ogawa is a pretty famous Japanese writer. I have also read The Housekeeper and The Professor by her, and I'm really honestly surprised that they are by the same author. The Housekeeper and The Professor was a very saccharine story that I listened to on audio last year or maybe the year before about a woman taking care of an old man, and there's a lot of stuff about baseball and mathematics, and it just felt like a very sweet story. Uh, perhaps a touch melancholy, but overall, pretty a nice contemporary. This is a lot more violent and brutal. It's called Revenge for a reason. There's there's some pretty graphic and horrific imagery in here, so if that is something that does not appeal to you, uh, I, I would definitely stray away from it. And I think that her other work, The Housekeeper and the Professor, may be slightly misleading because if you're expecting that in this, you'll probably be disappointed. My favorite story in the collection was probably Sewing for the Heart. It was also probably one of the most disturbing of the stories, but I all in all really enjoyed all of them. Like I said, because they're connected, it's a little bit trickier to to have favorites and least favorites because there is a three-line story to follow, although you have to put it together yourself a little bit. But I don't think that there was a bad story. I just think that Sewing for the Heart was probably my favorite. I find the way that they're tied together to be quite interesting. The first story takes place in a bakery. A woman has gone to the bakery. She is buying strawberry shortcakes for her and her son. Her son just happens to be dead and has been for many years. It just has become her tradition to buy strawberry shortcakes on his birthday. The woman minding the bakery is in the back and she's on the telephone and she's crying and you don't really know why. But the next story is about the woman who is crying in the back of the bakery and then a character or an event or something in that story is carried on to the next and the next and that is sort of how the stories are connected together. I think this is an accessible place to start if you're somewhat unfamiliar with Japanese literature but you're also looking for something a little bit darker. I would recommend this. Next is a collection I read a little while ago and it is Amy Bender's The Color Master. I finished this in May and I really, really enjoyed this. I had previously read The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender, which I also really enjoyed, but I liked this even more. I find her use of magical realism to be really clever and really interesting, quite unlike anything else that I've read. But there are also short stories in here that are realistic fiction, and there are a couple of more fairy tale esque short stories. I, I particularly liked the stories Appleless, The Bad Return, the Color Master and The Devourings. So those are probably my four favorite stories in the collection. There are 15 total. I don't know if I have much to say other than the fact that I really loved it. Although I will admit, uh, about two months out from reading this, looking at the titles of the short stories, I don't remember them all. And that might be sort of a negative aspect of this is that while I loved it at the time, uh, not all of the stories have really stuck with me, but I, I love the writing. I love the concepts I think that she's a really clever writer I will definitely be picking up basically everything else that she's written because I think that she is really really good This is definitely something that if you are a fan of Kelly Link you should check out I wanted to just share the opening of the first story which is called Appleless. It's a really really lush gorgeous short story and I just 
fell in love with the writing right away, so I thought I would share the opening passage. I once knew a girl who wouldn't eat apples. She wove her walking around groves and orchards. She didn't even like to look at them. They're all mealy, she said, or else too cheeky, too bloomed. No, she stated again, in case we had not heard her, our laps brimming with Granny Smiths and Red Deliciouses, with galas and Spartans and yellow golden globes. But we had heard her from the very first. We just couldn't help offering again. Please, we pleaded, eat, cracking our bites loudly, exposing the dripping wet white inside. It's unsettling to meet people who don't eat apples. The rest of us now only eat apples to compensate. She has declared herself so appleless. We feel we have no other choice. We sit in the orchard together, cross-legged, and when they fall off the trees into our outstretched hands, we bite right in. They are pale green, striped red on red, or a yellow and orange sunset. They are the threaded Fujis, with streaks of woven jade and beige, or the dark and rosy Rome beauties, Pippins, Pink Ladies, Brayburns, Macintosh. The orchard grows them all. It's like a two and a half page short story, but the writing is just so gorgeous and it made me want to read every story in rapid succession, which I did. Um, so again, I don't remember them all super vividly, but the ones that I loved, I really loved. And I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for fabulous or magical realism short stories. And lastly, this is definitely my favorite short story collection of the three and possibly my favorite short story collection that I've ever read. Absolutely adored the first story and I just wanted to devour the entire collection. I, I forced myself to stop to only read a story at a time so I could really savor each one because this book is so delightful. I really loved every short story in the collection and it, it jumped onto my favorite shelf. That's how much I really loved it. And it is How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Orenker. I originally heard about this book on Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings channel as I do many of the things that I read and love. So I really want to thank her for really bringing booktube's attention to this book. I know several people have read it because of her recommendation and, and I don't think I would have heard of it if not for her recommendation. So I'm really, really happy that she talked about it. It was well over a year ago that she did, but I had never bought it. I never got out of my way to buy it. And then I was at my local bookstore a month or so ago. I knew I had to have it and I read it pretty much straight away and I'm so glad that I did. So this is a collection of realistic short stories. They all focus on young people. Uh, sometimes they're children, oftentimes they're teenagers. It's dealing a lot with loss and grief and how confusing those things can be when you're a child and you're trying to make sense of these really human yet adult things that may not make full sense to you, but you're forced to confront them. Things like illness and death, but also things like growing up and sexuality and the, the barriers that differences between us can, can put up, like differences in race, differences in religious belief. But all, almost all of the stories are from the perspectives of children or teenagers. She, Julie Oringer, has such a way of capturing the mind of a child that I find to be unlike anything that I've read before. The first story, Pilgrim, may be the best depiction of the way that a child thinks and acts and behaves that I have ever read. I just found it to be so convincing, so spot on, and it completely drew me into the rest of the collection. And like I said, I wanted to devour the whole thing, but I made myself read it in, in little snippets so I could have time to savor each individual story. And so I, th I think it's thematically probably the strongest collection I've ever read because the theme is so is so clear about young people trying to grapple with these heavy subjects, these dark and, and adult circumstances that we normally don't associate with childhood and, and just how ch challenging it can be for a child to understand religion and the differences in people's religious beliefs or deal with the loss of, of someone, the death of someone or the illness of someone. I just, the way she does it is really remarkable and amazing. I don't know if I can actually put into words how much I loved this or why, but I would highly recommend that you pick it up, especially if you don't think that you like short stories or they haven't worked for you in the past. I would highly recommend this collection because I think that this might work for you. I just want more people to read it. I just thought I would leave you with the opening passage from the first short story, which is what drew me in right away. So the first story is called Pilgrims. It was Thanksgiving day and hot because this was New Orleans. They were driving uptown to have dinner with strangers. Ella pushed at her loose tooth with the tip of her tongue and fanned her legs with the hem of her velvet dress. On the seat beside her, Benjamin fidgeted with his shirt buttons. He had worn his pilgrim costume, brown shorts and a white shirt and yellow paper buckles taped to his shoes. In the front seat, their father drove without a word while their mother dozed against the window glass. 
She wore a blue dress and a strand of jade beads and a knit cotton hat beneath which she was bald. Three months earlier, Ella's father had explained what chemotherapy was and how it would make her mother better. He had even taken Ella to the hospital once when her mother had a treatment. She remembered it like a film strip from school, a series of connected images she wished she didn't have to watch. Her mother with an IV needle in her arm, the steady drip from the bag of orange liquid, her father speaking softly to himself as he paced the room, her mother shaking so hard she had to be tied down. So yeah, I think that speaks for itself. If you're gonna pick up any of these three, I would definitely say pick up How to Breathe Underwater, but I did, I did thoroughly enjoy all of these collections. I just enjoyed this one the most by far. So yeah, I know that these are all quite different, but I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these short stories if you've read them or if you have recommendations for me for other short stories to pick up. Like I said, I'm still relatively new to short stories. I'm still not entirely sure what makes a short story collection work for me versus what doesn't because I've read so few of them and have so uh, limited exposure to them because most people on booktube talk about novels, which is great, love novels, but I, I definitely want more short story recommendations and would love them based on any of the thoughts that I shared here today about these three works. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.